It is a privilege today to be joined on the summit by Pat Rafino. He is of the channel Analyze and Educate, based in St. Louis, Missouri. And I can say Missouri because my wife is from Warrensburg, and so she, she corrects me every now and again. But I, I'm not going to this time because I want to say Missouri. He's from St. Louis, Missouri, based in St. Louis, Missouri right now, probably from all over. Pat, I know you've done a lot of things, but right now in the St. Louis area, and you've been able to catch up with a number of small college coaches in that area as well. That's where I'd like to start today is just talking about that. You may be able to visit with some folks as, as the football season, 23 football season, college football season is just around the corner. Talk about getting to visit with these guys and, and uh, basically and, and getting them to come to where you are too. Great studio there. Well, I've been blessed. Um, I mean, first off, thank you for ha having me on. But overall, I've just been blessed to – be able to just, I guess it's part of its dumb luck, part of its determination, part of its uh, being involved in certain circles from my other career that, you know, you just kind of cross paths with people. And then you, when the mood is right, you kind of throw in that, that ticker in there and you're like, Hey, by the way, I do this. Um, would you ever want to talk shop? And, uh, you know, <clears throat> while Lindenwood University is the biggest school I've had, um, I've also done Fontbonne University and Missouri Baptist, which I think is more important, maybe not for the views of my channel, but more important that these coaches get to talk to me. Because even if it might not get hundreds of thousands of views, it's allowing these programs to have a spotlight compared to their competitors for when these kids and their parents look on my video, or look up Missouri Baptist or Fontbonne University, they get to see a guy with, you know, a wild Hawaiian shirt on talking to the <laughs> football coach, and they're like, oh, this guy seems like a normal human being. This is pretty cool. That is pretty cool. And and you talked about all those levels. Lindenwood was, uh, I think they were in AI for a while, Division Two for a while, Division One now, Fontbonne D3, and Missouri Baptist. Or overall is D3, but their program is a sprint football program. Oh, yes, that's right. That's with the yeah. sprint football as well. Sorry, I was thinking the overall take on that. And then Missouri Baptist in AI, who, by the way, is just now uh, switching conferences too. So yeah. there's a lot going on with with what you get to to talk about. But it's not just the the small college sports, but you get, you have a lot to do with the USFL and other of the, the alt football leagues. I kind of like that phrase too, the alt football leagues, as opposed to, I guess, the NFL but most recently USFL and man, you've got a lot of great content talking about the USFL. Well, it's, you know, I love the league. Um, I think, I think both, both leagues, I think the arena leagues, I think Canada is a great alternative for a lot of smaller school prospects because, you know, we always know about Terrence Cody going to the NFL, but do we know about Peyton Rose from Lindenwood? Do we know about Tanner Pullum from, from McKendry, you know, and then when I went to the showcase recently, there's a lot of guys who tried out for the XFL. You're looking on the roster and it's GLVC, OVC, go down whatever Missouri Valley Conference, you know, like the Twin Lakes of Mississippi Conference <laughs> east of the, you know, some of these conference names get very creative, to say the least. And not only does it make me you know, appreciative to put a spotlight on some of these guys when I see them or talk to them. It also elevates my football mind and, you know, in scouting and evaluating for what I'm doing it <clears throat> for, you know, whether it be a website, a coach that reaches out to me. So it's kind of pretty, it's pretty awesome to just be a part of the whole thing. And when you have these USFLs and XFLs around, it allows a spotlight, you know, it's kind of some people equated to a preseason. I think it's, you know, the term, uh, there's triple A, and then some people will say four A when they describe a career minor leaguer who can't, I think it's that four A, that nice buffer zone to allow these people to, you know, continue to one, continue their careers at a pretty decent wage and two, showcase their skills to the possible next level. You do a lot of research too. And that's one of the things I've, I've noticed about your, your content is that you really do know what you're talking about. And, and I guessed just like what you mentioned a little bit earlier, when the people see your videos, they're able to research as well. Yeah. And I think that's, and something that's been happening on my Twitter recently is I'm getting a light, a lot of likes and shares from, you know, Donna Smith or Donna Jones, and you go and you click on the profile and then they'll retweet my video and if you scroll down a little bit, they're re retweeting Brett Jones, who's their son. 
So mm-hmm. I think it's cool that these parents are seeing it and it kind of validates a lot of the stuff I'm doing. And especially being in, in, in St. Louis, I have William Woods about two hours away from me. I have Lincoln, Lincoln University about an hour away, hour and a half in Jeff City, Linden Woods up the road, um, Washington University of St. Louis. I have Missouri Baptist. I have Fontbonne. Um, I have s and in Rolla, just under two hours. I have SIUE um, under two hours, from, or excuse me, SIU Carbondale under two hours. I have SEMO under t- uh, about two hours from me. And then I have McKendree, 35 minutes. And then I'm still making a list and like figuring out what schools I want to go to and reach out to, to continue to put these spotlights on. So there's, if, you know, like probably 35 schools just on my side of Missouri. And that's not even going in the Kansas, the Kansas city side, and then going across the border, just going to Overland park for KU. Yeah. Yeah. And and of course you mentioned a couple of, of Illinois schools in there as well, but the, the, the neat thing I appreciated about what you said is that so many of those were small colleges or, or universities, but they, they have the, the athletes there, the stories are there to tell. And, and just like you, you said, I mean, everyone has a story to tell and it's so neat to get the opportunity to do that. And I'm, I'm really thankful for getting to visit with you right now and talk about the things that we do get to talk about because uh, we're an avenue then, as you mentioned, for some of these parents and, and grandparents to get to share about their own kids. Yeah. And it's, it's cool because, you know, I talked with coach B at, at MOBAP, he's a Colorado guy. So he taught, he, and, but he didn't, he played football in Colorado. I think we opened it up. He's like one for one for 11 yards, right? But if you look at his Rolodex of the, the guys that he played with and coached with and whatnot, when these kids hear that and they're like, yo, this coach, coach with Tyler Braden, played defensive end for like seven years or something like that, you know, it, it might get kids to gravitate. And when I talked to Coach Stubert, um, you know, he had Trey Pipkins and Dennis Gardeck and Clint Sig and of the USFL who was on the show as well. And, you know, he's like, hey, it allows these guys to hear them on another side. And, you know, you kind of can poke some fun and you get casual. But, you know, even Austin Bortle from Fontbonne, um, you know, guy has coached a lot of CFL guys, sent guys to NFL camps, um, played with Pierre Desir. I don't know if D.D. Dorsey was there. I think he said he played with both of them. I'd have to rewatch the video. But, you know, these guys just have so much experience and have seen so many different people that you might look, you know, a kid, and granted, you're a 16, 17-year-old kid, you might not be the most open-minded. might be like, I'm not going to go to this program. This is an NIA school. What do they know about pro football? And then they go see, you know, into Coach B's office or they go talk to Coach Wardle, and they're like, yeah, this guy knows some people like this guy can help me. And if I'm good, it don't matter what level I'm at. I'm going to get to the league. And, you know, we saw a lot of this year with the transfer portal, a lot of transfer ups. Like, um, I don't want to mess up the school, but I believe Ben Stratton went to S and T and now he's going to Mizzou right now and possibly could be their starting linebacker. Yeah. It, it is really something when you get to see the lineage of these coaches and get to talk to them and, and you're right. Uh, on the surface, you may not have ever thought about that, but yeah. the, it, it is there, and it's really neat to see those folks. We're here on the summit now here on Midwest Sports Net. I encourage you, please continue to enjoy the videos here where we talk about small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond. And that's what we're doing with the Midwest Sling right here in the St. Louis area with Pat Rafino. Pat, your YouTube channel, and, and you were talking about Twitter, and I know that you're on social media in a number of ways, but the YouTube channel, Analyze and Educate. And your channel has evolved over its life, and it, it's a great channel. I mean, tons and tons of views. People are seeing this, but it's evolved. Talk a little bit about the evolution of your channel. So it goes back. Um, my background is private security. Uh, I was in logistics and <clears throat> and medical, and um, I did four years in the service, uh, got out, <clears throat> Tried coaching football, didn't do too well. Um, wasn't, you know, probably, you know, I was probably one, 21, maybe 22. You know, had to do some maturing a little bit. <clears throat> but I uh, fell into some pretty weird situations as far as with work where people needed, you know, people who used to be in the military. And then one phone call led to another phone call. And then, you know, 2020, 
So for about six years, I was back and forth between overseas and I was just meeting so many people that I was like, man, I'm not trying to get on the podcast train, but like, we need to talk to people about like what's going on and not in like, you know, whistleblower sense, but like just the stories that these got these young people. And, you know, I was only 24, 25 at the time. And I was like, man, I need, you know, we have some great conversations about stuff that guys have done and people are going into contracting and you're like, <clears throat> these people need to like know about this stuff and like all the mistakes. Cause everyone, when they think about the overseas contracting, they, uh, they always think about, you know, Blackwater and there's so much more to that, you know, like I ran relief missions in Haiti, like, you know, from in 2019, 2020 and 2022, you know, and I've done the executive protection thing. And, you know, it's not just some hulking man with, with, you know, bodyguard type stuff. Like I'm planning like sophisticated logistics with like, you know, government agencies, like the police department, something too crazy. And like, you know, it was just, that's kind of how it started, but, you know, football was always in the back, in the back, and, um, you know, I talked to some guy in, like, 2019, I was in Afghanistan at the time, and, uh, Joey, I think I told you this story, but for the viewers is, I used to watch the AAF games all the time on YouTube, they would be streamed on YouTube, and I was doing, like, analysis, and I remember guys like, you know, Reese Horn came across my fold, Demorne Pearsonell, Charles Johnson and I started learning the players and then I started actually watching the film and like talking to people on the internet about it. And I did some small scouting jobs, like for like $5, $10, you know, just to say I did it, you know, and learning. And then I was getting ready to go all in in 2020. Um, I was left Afghanistan. I get back from Afghanistan. The XFL is happening. I'm still getting my footing. And then COVID happens. So I don't know what to do. And then I ended up going to New York as a medic for a while. So then we had to put football back again, like on the back burner, you know, because financially it was very lucrative as well. So I was doing the travel and then uh, 2021 came around and um, that was when the fall of Afghanistan happened. And I was still doing like contracts here and there. And I worked in Afghanistan for like two and a half years. Like I had a lot of local nationals, like Afghans that like reached out to me. And then, you know, I was just like, man, I can't do this anymore. Like I, I need to slow down. So I linked up with a news hub, started writing, started blogging, ended up making a little bit of money. And then I was still doing more domestic stuff. And then 2022 is when, you know, my fiance and I, we had a pretty serious conversation and she was like, I think you need to start going all in on this media stuff. Cause you it seems like, you know what you're talking about. And, uh, you know, that's when we started the more transition into more media stuff over the last year. You know, I covered the USFL in 2022, did it again this year, was on site a lot for 2023 with the XFL. But I mean, we're just going to keep grinding on it. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm loving it. I'm meeting a lot of people. Uh, sometimes the security <clears throat> side and the sports world intertwine. So occasionally, you know, depending on the setting, I have to be, you know, kind of separate those two. But um, overall, it's it's been an amazing experience. And, I'm you know, I'm grateful that I had to mature a little bit and I had to step back from, you know, what was going on. And I feel like that's helped me out because I've become – I think a better person and understanding how to deal with people who don't, you know, come from my background or my, you know, and granted I've moved around so much. I'm a chameleon at this point, but, um, you know, it's, it's, it's helped me talk with players, you know, and meet players and like, you know, player can tell me, Oh, I'm from California. I'm like, Oh, where at? And they're like, Oh, this part. I'm like, yeah, I used to live there. Like you go to Alberto's and they're like, yeah, I go to Alberto's. <laughs> and then that like interview comes to like right here. You know, yeah. you're not, like when I had Quint Sig on, he was all a little bit nervous. And I was like, yo, you like Zen? Have a Zen. Let's let's chill. And then the interview went really smooth after that. It's been, and, and your videos, I enjoy them. They're, they're from what I've seen, and, and I've seen a good number of them, uh, casual. It's a it's a really casual take. But you are able to meet them where they are, just like you, you mentioned there and, and get to to. Uh, relate and and 
of course, most of what I've seen have been the football and, and sports related, but still it's, it's been fun to watch. I want to encourage everyone to, to stop by. Of course, the channel name is analyze and educate, uh, but you can see, if you look up Pat Rafino and you can see the way his name spelled right there on the, on the corner of, of his window, he's a very good writer too. Good sports writer, good content. And you'll be able to, you'll enjoy it. You'll appreciate that. If, if you like football and, and you enjoy reading about those things, Pat, one of the thing too is, I mean, you know, you relate to the folks well, but you've got a good football mind, and I think that's something too that uh, people are able to connect and just visit with you because you you know what you're talking about. Yeah, and I think I think that makes some of the coach interviews a lot better, in my opinion, because I'm able to. I feel like sometimes when people talk to coaches in these hour long forms, it's 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 like a biography too much like and granted that's you know i have mike babcock uh coming on next week um in studio and we're gonna you know do that and he's got colorado ucla but there was a gentleman that i saw interview years ago and he was like so you played on the dolphins what was that like oh it was okay And and the player he was interviewing was still in the league so he's not gonna say anything outrageous because he might go back to the dolphins and it's kind of like, okay, so you went to the Dolphins from 2010 to 2012. You had 68 tackles in 2011. How did that feel? Well, it felt good, I guess. I wish I had 70. So it's sometimes you're able to talk scheme in the recruitment and just the human factors portions. It makes, you know, you can do the biography, but then you can also incorporate, like, incorporate, like, more the human element of it like coach babcock was at colorado when joe clatt and brendan schaub were there that's a sound bite right there you know yes. and you're not actually looking <laughs> at people's bios you know you're just going to talk about you know because after it's like i get done with a portion of the interview now or that like when we're talking about colorado and be like so who who was you know you can talk about the brendan schaub thing and then the conversation gets natural and then you know it's like it's it's it pushes on. And sometimes I try to keep things, you know, within parameters, but other times I rather just that free flowing conversation of nonsense Mm -hmm. because it's, I think sometimes it can be a little bit more fun like that. Oh, I agree with you. I, you know, you mentioned fun too, and, and you, you have a great studio. I mean, it's, it's absolutely fantastic opportunity. And, and, and so the folks who are able to come up and visit with you and you're live and you're together, it's, it's an, it's a great look, but you're not always in studio on top of that. And, and I refer to one video in particular in, in getting to uh, talk about tailgating uh, with Mohawk One. And I thought that was a, a great video too, because you're just able to, I enjoy being outside of what I call Studio B here. And <laughs> it's, it's fun. I mean, we, we have Midwest Sports Saturdays in the fall and even into the spring. Sometimes we'll, we'll go on location, but just go out and sit next to a car and visit with someone. How cool was that? Well, the coolest part about it is a little bit of the backstory is that Ballhawk One, he came from Wisconsin with a gentleman named Jason Spurgeon, who does the X Fan Show. And they came in and they put a tailgate on at the showcase. So they did this on their own fruition. You know, fans were not supposed to show up to the showcase. Well, they did. And they put on a great thing for, you know, these, these kids who are coming to the showcase that, you know, are going to grab some food and they may have not had the best performance or didn't get the thing, but you know, they had a bunch of people who cared about them that they were putting out on the line for our entertainment. And, you know, I don't want to get into like the football warrior thing, but they're essentially as close to gladiators as they get for us in our modern times. Cause you know, don't want to talk about, you know, the head trauma, but that that's a real thing. And these people are, going doing everything they can to entertain us and to see a bunch of people because it was like 20 people at this tailgate plus all the fans of the family members and whatnot at at there it was just a great thing to see that like they were engaging it wasn't just about aj mccarron it was about john smith from west texas amm who had a who just ran a 5 140 as a tight end probably not getting that call but he had people that cared about him and appreciated the that he came out here from Kansas, drove to St. Louis to pursue his dream. 
Yeah, that that is that is really pretty cool. Well, your your videos, I enjoy them. I appreciate what you bring to the table. And again, it's solid content. I just want to encourage folks if if you like uh, USFL. Of course, now the USFL is in. Uh, well, it's in the off season, I guess, if you will, coming off a championship. By the way, if there was ever a championship game that illustrated the difference between scoring a touchdown and and scoring a field goal. Um, you know, you got uh, Birmingham scoring four touchdowns, Pittsburgh scoring four field goals. There's the difference. A yeah. scores not, <laughs> they're not scores are not all equal, and uh, that's the difference in the game. But uh, off season, there you're getting to talk some small college uh, coaches as well. Pat, tell us what the future looks like, at least the immediate future looks like for analyze and educate. Well, Tuesday on Sunday we have. We're doing some CFL talk with Coach Phil Reacts, um, you know, specifically CFL quarterbacks. We're going to talk about guys like Dustin Crum, um, Taylor Cornelius, uh, Jeremiah Masoli, who's injured, a bunch of those guys. Um, and then Sunday afternoon, I'll be talking to a gentleman named Rick Saratello. He is the owner of All Access Football. He's done a lot of scouting for the last couple of years. Just got done at the Northeastern Conference's Media Day. I believe that was at MetLife Stadium. And he's now running the IF, the scouting portion of the IFA. Um, Tuesday, we have Mike Babcock of McKendree University coming on. And then on Friday, I will be at the GLVC Media Day football kickoff. And then a lot of the DMs are out. A lot of conversations are happening. Um, as far as more coaches and, you know, we're seeing what's going on, like, you know, working with the SIDs, working with the media, media teams, and we'll see what the XFL has got going on. If USFL is doing a showcase in Memphis, I'll probably go. And, uh, you know, just trying to put out a couple videos a week, entertain people and, you know, whatever players, you know, if they're passing through St. Louis, they want to talk for 25 minutes and, in the studio, I'm good with that. You know, I'll even have them come to my house. Might be a little weird, but yeah. You know. <laughs> no, that that's all right. You get you get the camera and you're just able to visit for a while. That that is okay. Uh, Pat, I appreciate your content. I want to encourage everyone else out there. I don't know that they they need this because you you've got a ton of views and you've got a good solid uh, audience. But I just want to encourage folks uh, stop by and uh, check out analyze and educate. It's Pat Rafino there, and he's talking. Uh, football on so many different levels and professional college up and down the dial. I think you you'll really enjoy it. Pat, thank you. Thanks for taking some time with me today. I really appreciate that. Getting to see the St. Louis cap as well. Uh, uh, that that's cool, but it's just been fun to get to, to visit with you and talk about football. Thank you, sir. Always, sir. And you know, if you're ever up my way or I'm ever down your way, we'll do this in person. We can do that at a stadium. It don't matter with me. No doubt. I, hey, listen, there will be a studio here on site. That's that. That's the plan is that Studio A is the one that's in the future. It's all up right here right now, <laughs> but it'll, it'll, it'll be there. And I know that we do have two Midwest Sports Saturdays planned for the state of Missouri in the fall of 23. So uh, maybe we'll make that work out. Pat Rafino here on the summit. Thank you, sir. God bless you. Have a good day. You too, sir. Thank you.